Once more, Volkswagen has reinvented the Beetle. Bigger and more efficient than its predecessor, the third generation version might not look quite so extrovert, but it's a far better car. More importantly for its target market among retro rivals, it's also a more stylish one. Aesthetics matter. Go on, live a beautiful life. The new generation Beetle, the latest interpretation of a model that ranks alongside the three best-selling cars of all time. And as you'll probably already know, it comes with quite a history. If you're not familiar with that, then I need to turn the clock back for you to the early 1940s. To be quite frank, we don't have much to thank Adolf Hitler for, but his vision of what he called the KDF Wagen, uh, KDF means Kraft durch Freude, the old Nazi slogan, strength through joy. The German people's car certainly had something to be said for it. Later generations were to know that model much better by another name, the Volkswagen Beetle and over 21 million examples had been sold worldwide by the time, in 1998, the German brand finally got around to bringing us a modern version. What was known as the New Beetle, of course, shared nothing apart from its iconic name and curvy shape with the first generation version, and quite right too. The crude, noisy and comfortless rear-engined air-cooled original was the last thing that modern buyers were likely to want. Their idea of Beetle motoring was very different from that of the basic functional transport envisioned by the original's creator, Dr. Ferdinand Porsche. New Beetle was less of a people's car and more of a people's plaything. Early buyers, including Beverly Hills celebrities, a president's daughter, and various exclusive high-class car rental establishments. A million New Beetles were sold over 13 years, 68,000 of them in the UK. But the modern take on this iconic design was never quite the success it might have been. The curvy toy town looks and touches like the flower vase on the dash left it as an exclusively feminine and fashion-centric choice. Buyers who quickly forsook its charms when, at the turn of the century, new Mini and much later the rejuvenated Fiat 500 came along. Volkswagen wants them back and aims to achieve that with this third generation model, a car that aesthetically at least is much closer to the design of the original. Longer, wider and lower than its predecessor, it's intended to be more sporty, masculine and dynamic. And because the Golf underpinnings remain, this time more modern ones, it can be a more practical choice than its retro rivals. Add very competitive running costs, perky performance, and a dash of high-tech, and you've a car that could reignite the Beetle cult all over again. Let's try it. Now, it wasn't only the look of the second-generation Beetle that put male buyers off. Driving one was a curious experience that seemed to position you and the steering wheel right in the centre of the car. Add feeble engines and copious amounts of body roll and it was hard to imagine a uh, less sporty experience. For the buying demographic to alter this time round, that had to change, and it has. As you'd expect, it would with underpinnings from a 2009 Golf Mark VI rather than a 90s Golf Mark IV. For a start, it feels a more serious thing, with all of the previous models' uh, noddy style touches, the enormously oversized speedometer, the ridiculously high roof, now thankfully dispensed with. You now sit more purposefully behind three beautifully crafted dials, grasping a thin-rimmed three-spoke steering wheel and positioned closer to the swept-back windscreen. And because the body's stiffer, so the turn-in's sharper. It's still no sports car, still no Mini come to that, but it's much closer to the class standard. If anything, the engineers might have gone a little too far down the sporty route. Uh, the ride can be slightly unsettled over poorer services, one reason why I'd steer very well clear of the 19-inch alloy wheels option or the extra-cost sports suspension. Not good in town, where uh, at least you'll appreciate the rather over-light electric power steering, if not the rather notchy six-speed gearbox. Urban Easters will want the uh, seven-speed DSG double-clutch automatic gearbox as an extra-cost option. 
Beyond the city limits, compensation comes over fast flowing roads where the damping really is very good indeed. No, in truth, it's not quite as good a ride and handling package as you'll find in a Golf, but then to compare these two cars is an irrelevance. You'll buy a Beetle because it's a bit of fun and because there aren't too many compromises required in doing so. And that's all a million miles away from the dull, sensible practicality of Golf motoring. Even Golf GTI motoring, this hot hatch having donated many of this Beetle's underpinnings. Even uh, a detuned 200 PS version of its 2 litre petrol turbo engine. Now this is the only variant to feature the Golf's state-of-the-art multi-link rear suspension setup. Other lesser Beetle models uh, get a simpler torsion beam arrangement, hence perhaps a slightly poorer ride. And it's one of these uh, lesser models that I'm driving here, uh, the 1.4 TSI. It uh, has an engine under the bonnet that's anything but retro, using both turbocharging and supercharging to produce uh, 240 newton meters of torque. And with a power output of 160 PS, that's good enough to fire the car from rest to 60 in just 8.3 seconds. So it's nearly as quick as the top of the range two liter TSI. It's pretty good through the twisty stuff too, like its larger engine stablemate sharing the Golf GTI's clever XDS electronic differential lock. Now this improves handling through fast corners by selectively breaking the unloaded wheel on the inside of a curve, so reducing wheel spin and firing the car through the bend. But even rejuvenated Beetle motoring isn't really about high performance, and with that in mind you may be tempted to save a little and opt for the lower powered petrol derivative or one of the diesels. The uh, um, base petrol model is a 1.2 TSI, uh, which is surprisingly punchy, despite its relatively modest 105 PS power output. Uh, this engine produces a healthy 175 Newton meters of torque, enough to fire the car from rest to 60 in 10.9 seconds on the way to a top speed of 111 miles an hour. Uh, also with 105 PS is the entry level uh, 1.6 litre TDI diesel. Um, that uh, uh, engine also has the uh, blue motion technology efficiency mods and slots in just below the minority interest 140 PS 2 litre TDI diesel. Looking back, the style of the second generation new Beetle didn't have much in common with the original. That car was defined by three semicircles, front wing, rear wing, and domed roof, which determined its cartoon-like look. This one dispenses with that geometry altogether, based on larger, more modern golf underpinnings. Not a good basis, you'd think, for trying to better replicate the 1940s original, but the design team resolved to try anyway. A post-war Mark I version was parked in their office, and the design team were told to immerse themselves in Beetle memorabilia. And sure enough, something of the feel of Dr. Ferdinand Porsche's early people's car has somehow made it through to this third generation model, most notably with the large wheels plumply positioned beneath flared flowing arches and a rear C-pillar that remains faithful to the original design. So there's something of the past artfully mixed with a sporty vision of the future. Really, a sporty looking Beetle? It's quite a new concept for British buyers, but not so for the American market this car is primarily aimed at. The US holds quite a strong Beetle tuning culture and wanted potency rather than design pastiche when the time came for this Mark III model. They've got it. Perhaps the most notable change in this respect is the lower roof that the larger floor plan has enabled to be swept further back. At the front, where the circular headlamps are unique in the Volkswagen range, there's a longer bonnet in front of a more steeply raked windscreen that's also been shifted further back. Overall, it's a cleaner, more self-confident, lower profiled look that even has something of a touch of Porsche 911 about it. Moving inside this three-door only body shape, you notice that the frameless doors open wide, but not so wide as to make ingress difficult in tight parking spaces. 
and at the wheel you're seated behind a traditional upright dashboard with three traditional dials visible through a sporty three-spoke thin rim steering wheel. Unfortunately the plastics are traditional too so no golf style soft touch surfaces. Still the quality seems good even if the Mexican factory doesn't seem to screw things together quite up to German fabricated golf standards. Still, the look and feel all seems to suit this car's retro vibe, especially with the body-coloured door sill and dash inserts you get on plusher models. Other early Beetle touches include the upwards opening glove box, natty elastic straps instead of door pockets, and the optional auxiliary instruments you can specify to sit here above the infotainment system. You'll look in vain though for the dash mounted flower vase that you had on the Mark II model. Good. Volkswagen claims that those confined to the two seater bench at the back get a better deal than before, despite the lack of a roof line so previously high that wedding guests could wear their hats on the way to the ceremony. It's lower now but the use of a bigger platform with greater length and width is supposed to benefit both leg and elbow room. Fine in principle, but in practice, the way the body tapers towards the rear makes this back seat a necessarily cosy place to be. Fine though for kids or for adults on relatively short journeys, and of course miles better than a Mini or a Fiat 500. Out back, in the space where the original Beetle once had its air-cooled engine, there's a boot lid that swivels upwards along with the rear screen when opened to reveal 310 litres of cargo capacity. That's 50% more than before. The sloped boot lid makes it awkward to carry taller items though. If you do need more space then you can push forward the 50-50 split folding rear seats to uh, reveal up to 905 litres and that, uh, that makes this by far the most practical of all the retro star models on the market. Expect to pay somewhere in the 17 to 25,000 pound bracket for most versions of the hardtop Beetle model that we're looking at here. Now that's not bad value in Volkswagen terms, helped uh, maybe by the fact that this car is actually Mexican built with more affordable labour. Now, though there's a uh, 200 PS 2 litre petrol turbo engine offered at the top of the range, and there are a couple of diesels, a 1.6 and a 2 litre, respectively developing either 105 or 140 PS, most UK sales will be of the 1.2 and 1.4 litre petrol variants. Uh, those are the uh, engines that this car was launched with. That's what we're going to focus on here choose a comparable Golf with the same engine and transmission combination and you'd be looking at paying oh, a couple of thousand pounds more whether at 1.2 or at 1.4 litre level. Customers considering uh, this hardtop Golf get a single three door body style and must find a £3,000 premium if they're to progress from the entry level 1.2 to the Pokia 1.4. As for rivals, well what exactly do you call a rival to this car? There are of course any number of standard or sportily styled three door family hatches that you could buy for a similar amount of money, but few if any of them are really what you call a lifestyle statement. And that's exactly what this car is. With that in mind, I picked a few alternatives here that beetle orientated people might also be considering. First, there's the ubiquitous mini hatch, which in 122 PS Cooper guys uh, costs around the same as the entry level 1.2 litre version of this Volkswagen. Both cars are comparably quick, but it's the Beetle, in uh, auto form at least, that is the cheaper of the two to run. The only other uh, kind of direct rival I can really think of is Nissan's trendy Duke which uh, in 117 PS 1.6 litre petrol guys compares against the entry level version of this car. The Nissan will save you about a thousand pounds but is slightly slower and costs a little more to run. Less direct to competitor but still in the frame for a few will be Audi's more conventional little A1. 
for around 500 pounds, more than the cost of a 1.2 litre Beetle, you can get an A1 1.4 litre TFSI with a little more power. For around a thousand pounds, more than the cost of a Beetle 1.4, you can get the A1 1.4 TFSI with 185 PS, so yeah, the Audi would be a lot more powerful. But uh, that Audi only comes with a, an auto gearbox, and many Beetle 1.4 buyers will want a manual transmission. Ultimately though, you have to say that there's nothing quite like this car. So what can you expect to find in terms of equipment, regardless of your choice between 1.2 uh, or 1.4 or 2-litre petrol variants, or indeed the 1.6 or 2-litre diesels? Well, it's a bit disappointing to find that entry-level variants do without things like Bluetooth compatibility for your mobile phone, an alarm or alloy wheels. But all versions do get uh, climatic semi-automatic air conditioning that also cools the glove box, a trip computer, power heated mirrors, electric windows, uh, an eight-speaker MP3 compatible CD stereo with aux in point and a hill holder clutch to stop you drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Further up the range, you'll find features like 17-inch alloy wheels, front fog lights, and a three-spoke leather-trimmed multifunction steering wheel. Desirable extras include a panoramic glass roof, by xenon headlamps, parking sensors, dash-mounted gauges, and a superb 400-watt Fender-branded sound system with a switchable three-color illumination around the front speakers. In terms of safety kit, well, all models get twin front, side and curtain airbags, together with anti-whiplash head restraints and Isofix child seat fastenings. And to try and make sure you never have to use any of this stuff, there are the usual electronic aids for braking, traction and stability control. Now, sensible virtues probably won't be top of your agenda in selecting a Beetle, but should they happen to be, then you'll need to be talking to your dealership about the 1.6 litre TDI variant, because that version comes with all of Volkswagen's cleverest blue motion technology efficiency mods. Things like uh, low rolling resistance tyres, uh, battery energy regeneration, and a start-stop system that cuts the engine when you don't need it, when you're stuck in traffic or you're waiting at the lights. Now, as a result of all this, uh, this particular variant uh, puts out just 114 grams per kilometer of CO2 and manages 65.7 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle, which should give it a decent operating range from the 55 litre fuel tank. As for the petrol models, well, the 1.2 TSI manages 47.9 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and uh, puts out 137 grams per kilometre of CO2, while the 1.4 TSI that I'm driving here manages 42.8 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 153 grams per kilometre of CO2. What else? Well, there's a choice of two low-cost servicing regimes. Uh, time and distance, uh, that's a system that's really geared for lower mileage users covering less than 10,000 miles a year uh, with fixed uh, intervals. Or you could opt, uh, if you uh, cover more than 10,000 miles a year, to go for a long life regime that's based on actual vehicle use. And uh, here the system is governed by the car itself and uh, the computers lengthen the service intervals where possible, informing the driver via a dashboard display when a garage visit is needed. As for residual values, well, for the time being, a Beetle is fashionable again, so it'll hold on to the money you paid very well indeed, probably better than a comparable Golf. Whether that'll continue into the long term will probably depend on the vagaries of fashion. And insurance costs, well, they shouldn't be too prohibitive. To give you an idea, the entry-level 1.2 TSI is rated at uh, groups 10 or 11, while the 1.4 TSI is up at group 18. Uh, you get a three-year, 60,000-mile warranty, uh, 12 years of body protection, uh, a three-year paint warranty, and a year of roadside assistance in the UK and Europe. Now, you could argue that in this Mark III design, we finally have the proper Beetle tribute model that we should have had in the first place. This car borrows its heritage, its silhouette, and its retro uniqueness from the post-war original but fuses them with the sort of fuel economy, safety and creature comforts 
that the modern buyer demands without the retro excesses and gender specific touches of the second generation version. This time round a sportier look is matched by a sportier feel from an efficient range of engines but even so this is still a car that you'll either love or hate which is just as it should be. A model like this remains an unashamed indulgence both on the part of its maker and those who will buy it. True, the trend modern Beetles once set for high street chic has now been copied by a whole clutch of rivals. Yet you can see why loyal owners love this Volkswagen so much. It certainly isn't a rational choice, but then if we did everything for rational reasons, the world would be very dull indeed. Just as its predecessor did over 70 years ago, this car has made the automotive landscape just that little bit brighter.